In Europe and globally, what are the trends in liver diseases in children? Well, we know that obesity prevalence is increasing dramatically in the past two decades, both among adults and children. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a disease strongly related with obesity, so it's not surprising that the prevalence of obesity among both children and adults is also increasing. Now, we know that the prevalence among adults is around 25% across Europe. In children, several studies have shown that the prevalence is between 5 to 10% among children. But if you look at children attending obesity clinics, then 30%, at least 30% of the children there have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And amazingly, some of them have advanced liver disease at a very young age. So 20 to 50% of them can have non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is the inflammatory state. And 10 to 20% can have significant fibrosis, which is really severe. So this situation is really worrying. What are the main reasons for this alarming situation and what are the barriers to addressing it? So first of all, it's obesity, as I said, and we need to do a really big efforts to prevent obesity among children. Prevention is the most important thing. So the rising prevalence of obesity is, is significant for the prevalence of NAFELD. And there is also beyond obesity, many other factors that we should consider, like the quality of diet the children eat. There are surveys showing that across Europe, almost 50% of the calories of the daily calories of children comes from ultra-processed food. Ultra-processed food is a major source of added sugars, which lead to uh, uh, liver fat accumulation, is a major source of saturated fat, which is unhealthy both to the heart and to the liver, and other unhealthy ingredients. And that also includes sugar-sweetened beverages, which children drink a lot across Europe. And amazingly, we see in European surveys that it doesn't distribute equally among children from different affluent uh, families. So children from more deprived families will drink more soft drinks, will eat less healthy diet, and are less likely to consume fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. In addition, there is the issue of physical activity. Children sit a lot in front of uh, the, the computer, or the television, and do, do not do enough physical activity. Again, children from more, more deprived areas or families do less physical activity as compared to those with uh, more so those children in a higher socioeconomic um, status. Another thing is that children are exposed to very aggressive. Uh, marketing of ultra processed foods and drink and a lot of exposure in the social media to advertising of unhealthy food specifically targeting children and minorities so we have a lot to do there are many challenges on the way but it also means that there's a lot of potential for prevention and treatment as a nutrition expert what are your recommendations so our recommendation focuses on prevention and treatment of obesity, but as I said, beyond obesity, we want to improve diet quality. So we recommend the Mediterranean type of diet, high fruit and vegetable consumption, fresh food, home-based um, uh, cooking meals uh, versus ultra-processed fast food kind of meals, and reducing the sugar intake of sugared beverages, right? And increasing the consumption of healthy fats like olive oil and nuts and, and fish on the account of unhealthy fats like saturated fat and also minimizing consumption of processed meat and eating moderately red meat. So, but we know it's very difficult to implement these recommendations and not all children and not all families can afford buying these expensive foods. So one of the things we need to do is to change the environment. We need to help our patients by making the environment more diet friendly. So we need to work on subsidizing the prices of fruit and vegetables and healthy food. We need to uh, increase the availability of water and reduce the availability and marketing of sugar-sweetened beverages 
We also need to increase physical activity among children by education and by providing uh, an available infrastructure around their neighborhood where, where they can perform physical activity. And lastly, we need to work with legislation. We need to uh, ban or at least limit significantly the digital marketing towards children, the aggressive marketing towards children, and that can support children and families by actually implementing a healthy lifestyle. Are the EU governments aware of the childhood obesity problem? Undoubtedly, Europe has an obesity problem. Prevalence rates of obesity have more than doubled in Europe in the last decade. Serious health disorders such as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can result from overweight. The prevalence of overweight and obesity among children continues to grow and should be a major concern in several European countries. Governments need to take action and the European Union should take the lead in pushing uh, countries apply in, in uniform regulation. The level of recognition of obesity as a public health problem differs between and within countries. While obesity is a recognized public health priority in some countries, it barely appears in public policy debates in others. In some countries, obesity is mainly seen as an individual lifestyle problem and not as a population health problem. A view that is strongly promoted, of course, by the food industry. One of the main challenges to implementation of obesity policy is funding. Depending on the country, resources are limited or non-existent. The evidence is clear. Unhealthy food marketing affects what children eat and thus their health and their well-being. What measures can be taken to mitigate the marketing of unhealthy foods to children? We must call on the EU to tackle the exposure of young people to the promotion of unhealthy food, high in fat, sugar and salt. The European Public Health Alliance created a blueprint directive which states what the EU should put in place to protect children's rights and health. Concretely, it says that we could protect children from the marketing of ultra-processed and food high in fat, sugar and salt by preventing broadcast media marketing of such food, foods between 6 a.m. and um, 11 p.m. 6 a.m. and uh, 11 p.m. And putting stop on, to the marketing of nutritionally poor food on digital uh, media. Furthermore, we need to end the sponsorship of sports events by food brands unless brands can prove that such sponsorship is not associated with unhealthy food. Another impactful measure to be implemented is to end the use of marketing techniques appealing to children, particularly on packages of nutritionally poor uh, food. And indeed, in the long run, we should think what should be labeled and uh, sold as food in general for our children and youngsters. This uh, food regulation is then the next step uh, of the story. What are the challenges? Clearly, we need to recognize the de delirious impact of marketing foods high in fat, sugar, and salt, and high sugar drinks to children. 
Policymakers need to pay attention to unregulated and narrow casting of marketing message to mobile phones by digital and social media. Experience from the tobacco industry has shown that the only effective means to protect children is through a complete ban on the marketing of ultra-processed food. Obviously, it is difficult battle considering the power of food industry and the attitudes. One of the key actors involved in the decision-making of ob obesity policies is the food industry. In addition, there is little understanding uh, of the business models of social media and marketing. Social media, commonly visited by children, exposes them to large amount of unhealthy food and the advertisement. National governments face significant difficulties in regulating multinational corporations in advertising area related to children's health. There are inherent problems associated with self-regulation and public-private partnership. There is a need for states to adopt laws that prevent companies from using insidious marketing strategies. Food marketing is a concern that we must uh, act on, and it must be at the heart of the EU inter internal market policy. The European Union should make countries apply uniform marketing regulations on all social and digital media, expanding from the EU's audiovisual media service directive and on its basis. <laughs>